Monday, it's part of the culture. on Monday, a uh, district court judge, Amit Mehta, um, basically struck down the president's effort to quash a subpoena that the House Oversight and Reform Committee um, had issued to the accounting firm Mazars USA looking for Trump's uh, financial records. Um, this is going to impact, I think, the attempt by the uh, Trump administration to also quash a uh, Deutsche Bank uh, subpoena as well uh, from, I think it's from, the, uh, from a different uh, committee. There was a 41-page opinion, and apparently, uh, I've yet to read the opinion, but uh, according to... Um, Politico Meta systematically dismantled the Trump's legal team's arguments against the validity of the subpoena, pushed back on claims from congressional Republicans that the House Judiciary Committee must formally launch an impeachment inquiry before issuing such subpoenas, which is the one of the most relevant reasons to set up impeachment inquiries, because there is far less controversy over the uh, whether the judiciary will uphold subpoenas from a an impeachment committee. Um, the judge said it's simply not fathomable that a constitution that grants Congress the power to remove a president for reasons including criminal behavior would deny Congress the power to investigate him for unlawful conduct, past or present, without even without formally opening an impeachment inquiry. Um, Meta noted that Congress had twice investigated alleged illegal activity by Presidents Richard Nixon and Bill Clinton. Congress plainly views itself as having sweeping authority to investigate illegal conduct of a president before and after taking office. Uh, we could go on, but this um, case has now been, uh, will be, if it hasn't already, um, appealed by Trump's attorneys and the appeal will be filed with the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, just a little reminder about this court. It is um, the chief judge is Merrick Garland. You may remember him for the guy who did not get a hearing on uh, whether he should be uh, on his nomination to the Supreme Court. But even more relevant that you must keep in mind I can't remember how many years ago now this was, uh, five or six years ago, Republicans refused in the Senate to hold hearings to seat three more judges. It's an 11 panel court, 11 judge court. They have actually others that are um, sort of uh, emeritus that sit in on, uh, on, on some cases, but it's essentially an 11 uh, judge court. There were only eight it was deadlocked. Republicans kept obstructing via use of the filibuster and would not seat the other three. They started to make the argument that you only need eight judges there. And um, that's when Harry Reid basically nuked the filibuster so that he could seat those other three judges. And of course, this is the second most powerful court in the country that deals with questions like this because it's in Washington. It also deals with the authority that government agencies have, and that can cut both ways insofar as people can sue the EPA for not living up to their statutory obligations, which is happening now. Back during the Obama administration, you had people like Chris Kobach who would sue the EPA for supposedly overstepping their statutory limitations. And so you see that that changes depending on the uh, administration where people are using the law as a way of getting the agencies to do a certain job. And uh, but when a, uh, a Democrat's in their office, Republicans are suing to keep the agency from doing their job. Uh, so. Interesting turnabout. And uh, this process is not going to go on too far they're going to file this within a timely manner. I'm not sure how many weeks they have. 
and uh, they will file it. And I would imagine the D.C. Circuit Court is going to hear it rather quickly. But it is all this delay tactics that is pushing the Democratic caucus to push for impeachment. Here is Donald Trump complaining about this ruling by this federal judge. An Obama appointed judge. Go ahead. Well, we disagree with that ruling. It's crazy because uh, you look at it. Th this never happened to any other president. They're trying to get a redo. They're trying to get what we used to call in school a deal, a do over. And if you look, uh, you know, we had no collusion. We had no obstruction. We had no nothing. The Democrats were very upset with the Mueller report, as perhaps they should be. But I mean, the country is very happy about it because it was never anything like that. And they're trying to get a redo or a do over. And you can't do that. As far as the financials are concerned, we think it's the uh, wrong. It's totally the wrong decision by obviously an Obama appointed judge. He was a recent Obama appointed judge. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about. The redo or the do the do over that we used to call it in school. I guess he's talking about the election. Uh, but, uh, in fact, I think he's talking about the Mueller report. Well, yes, but the, the judge clearly said there is precedent for Congress to provide oversight. So maybe he didn't read the, um, maybe he didn't read the decision, but, um, to, to one extent, the fact that it is an Obama judge, I think sadly has more and more relevance because we have one six of the judiciary the circuit court judiciary, um, which actually is where this uh, this this case is headed. One sixth is now appointed by Trump. It is the most of any president in this point in their term. And uh, the amount of conservative judges on the federal courts is extraordinary. And you can almost. I mean, there are occasions where you get a George Herbert Walker judge who will rule against uh, Donald Trump, occasionally a GWB judge, occasionally less so than uh, his uh, poppy Bush. But the Trump judges, they all rule down the line for Trump. And, um, and, and as you would imagine, also for business and against uh, government uh, authority and whatnot. So one more example of the relevance of the judiciary and... Even as horrific as Joe Biden is, he is not going to appoint judges from the Federalist Society, which is the exclusive uh, feeder for Trump judges, um, which is a which has huge import, huge import. Well, when Trump says that, he's hinting at something that people already suspect about judges, which is that they rule not based on these like arcane close readings of the Constitution or whatever, but based on their politics and their ideology. It just so happens that all of the judge, most of the judges appointed by Democrats, their politics and their ideology are to preserve norms and, you know, justify everything with like a, a good faith reading of the Constitution, whereas the ones appointed by Republicans are just like openly ideological reactionary activists. So but much more so the more recent ones, because that has been uh, the project of the Federalist Society over the years. So like given that fact, <laughs> it would make sense maybe for Democrats who are actually progressive to be more nakedly political with the judiciary. Well, I think that's the that's the argument uh, that people are making in terms of like uh, of, of expanding the, the Supreme Court and whatnot. <coughs> I mean, it's not not political now the way the Democrats do it. But I guess what I really mean is more uh, more open about it and, you know, further to the left. Um, from your mouth to Bernie's ears, because he is still, I think, a little bit slow on the idea of uh, of, of some type of Supreme Court reform. But. Um, here is, um, oh, we didn't have, uh, we haven't played this, uh, of Nadler, Jared Nadler, uh, Jerry Nadler, the uh, chairman of the house judiciary committee was anticipating as of about 48 hours ago, Don McGon, the uh, white house lawyer 
who apparently cooperated extensively with the Mueller report in talking about the various um, times that Donald Trump tried or ordered him essentially to break the law. And uh, Don McGahn did not. Uh, but Jerry, uh, Jerry Nadler wanted uh, to air this publicly because, of course, so few people have read the Mueller report, not aware of the instances of obstruction that uh, Trump is engaged in um, and other issues, frankly, that are, are in the report may not rise to the specific uh, nature of a conspiracy as defined narrowly uh, by the Justice Department, but certainly um, stuff that we wouldn't uh, that, that, that is impeachable offenses, frankly, by a president. But here is Nadler announcing that um, he will be um, holding Don McGahn in contempt after McGahn just blew off a subpoena. This committee issues a subpoena. Even to a senior presidential advisor, the witness must show up. Our subpoenas are not optional. Mr. McGahn has a legal obligation to be here for this scheduled appearance. If he does not immediately correct his mistake, this committee will have no choice but to enforce the subpoena against him. Mr. McGahn did not appear today because the president prevented it. Just as the president has said the, that he would, quote, fight all subpoenas, close quote, issued by Congress as part of his broader efforts to cover up his misconduct. This stonewalling makes it all the more important to highlight some of the incidents that Mr. McGahn is said to have witnessed. Let me recount some of them. We know that the president directed Mr. McGahn to prevent then Attorney General Sessions from accusing himself from overseeing the investigation into Russian election interference. On March 3rd, 2017, shortly after Attorney General Jeff Sessions did recuse himself from the Russian investigation, the president summoned Mr. McGahn to the Oval Office. According to the Mueller report, quote, the president opened the conversation by saying, I don't have a lawyer, unquote. The president told Mr. McGahn that he wished that Roy Cohn was his attorney instead. Roy Cohn, of course, is known principally as the chief architect of the Army McCarthy hearings that destroyed so many lives back in 1954, an actual political witch hunt not the imaginary kind the president decries. Mr. Cohn served as President Trump's lawyer for a long time, defending the president against federal discrimination suits before he, that is Mr. McCohen, was ultimately disbarred for unethical practices in 1986. Mr. McGahn refused to follow blindly into unethical behavior. Mr. McGahn told the president that the Department of Justice ethics officials had weighed in and that Mr. Sessions would not unrecuse himself, and he advised the president not to have any contact with Mr. Sessions. On I mean, it goes on. And of course, Donald Trump did not have contact with Jeff Sessions, or at least that we know of in this regard. He just went publicly out and shamed him publicly. And which is, you know, in some respects, sort of a parallel to the whole um, involvement with Russia. He didn't, didn't include. He just said, hey, if you're wondering what our state of mind is in the campaign in regards to the 30,000 other emails, go for it. That's what Trump means when he says he's the most transparent president. I'm going to recuse myself. I'm going to recuse myself. Trump's amazing Jeff Sessions impression. Um, Coming on the heels of denying vehemently that he called uh, Sessions mentally retarded and a dumb Southerner. He then trotted out that Beverly Hillbilly's impression of him like a month later. month later. Uh, so this is going to be interesting to see where this goes with Don McGahn, and particularly uh, in the wake of this ruling about uh, the subpoenaing of Trump's records from his accounting firm. And this is going to build. I mean, there it, it seems to me an inevitability at this point that we're going to get to some type of impeachment. I mean, it's going to take another, I think, a uh, month or two before the pressure builds enough. But they can't keep 
avoiding con- Congress's um, constitutional role of oversight. It just can't keep doing it. I mean, they can stonewall, but th- this is just not, it's just not sustainable for them.